Welcome to the congressional debate between Kentucky Senator Henry Clay, supporting the North, played by Ella, and John C. Calhoun, supporting the South, played by Nikki. Today, Henry Clay will be discussing the proposal of the Compromise of 1850. Today, I will be presenting the Compromise of 1850. This is meant to be a solution to the outstanding slavery expansion issues in our country. First, California will be admitted to the Union as a free state. Any opinions on that, Calhoun? Adding a state to the Union throws off the bounds in the Senate, giving the North an unfair advantage. The free states and slave states need to be admitted in pairs. But this is what the people want. Gold miners do not want to allow wealthy men to have an unfair advantage when it comes to mining. Slaveholders have slaves to do the work for them, and the rich will only get richer. But there will be slaves anyways. How will you stop them? I think people will be opposed to bringing slaves into California once they realize there's little law and order to keep the slaves from escaping and being caught. And with this bill, slaves entering California, if they're able to escape, can obtain their freedom. The Fugitive Slave Act, Part 5 of the Compromise, will not apply there. All right, so be it. California was decided to be passed as a free state. Clay's second bill of proposal was to have popular sovereignty decide if New Mexico and Utah would be a free state or a slave state. Second, I would like to have the new settlers vote for if these states will be free state and slave states. This shall be done by popular sovereignty. The people are not educated enough to vote on what they will want. The new settlers should be able to choose whether or not they want to be a free state or a slave state. This choice should not be made from the people that will not be living there. This proposal from Henry Clay was approved in the Compromise of 1850 with letting the new settlers choose if they wanted Utah and New Mexico to be a free state or a slave state. Clay's next proposal in the Compromise of 1850 included territorial means of New Mexico. My third bill in this proposal will be that Texas loses the boundary dispute with New Mexico. We feel as if this is unfair because we have gained territory in eastern New Mexico and we should be able to keep it, even if the people in New Mexico oppose it. New Mexico has long prohibited slavery, and there was previously border disputes between Texas and New Mexico, in which New Mexico does not want the people of Texas in their territory. New Mexico also claims that Texas's capital lay hundreds of miles away from their territory. This proposal is biased towards the North. We feel as if we should gain back our debt of $10 million back if we give up the New Mexico territory. This proposal from Henry Clay was approved in the Compromise of 1850 with Texas losing the border dispute with and territory in New Mexico, however, gained $10 million they had previously accumu accumulated in debt. Another bill was stated to ban the slave trade in the District of Columbia, which is also known as Washington, D.C., but not outlaw the owning of slaves. Any change of ownership or auctioning of slaves will be illegal. However, owning slaves is still permitted. This bill allowed the slaves working in the capital to keep working, but took a step towards the abolition of slavery. This is ridiculous. Banning the trade takes away the economy and income from selling slaves. Abolitionists in the district want to see the slave trade go, starting with the capital. To meet in the middle and compromise on this bill, I think going halfway by banning the trade is an obvious solution. Okay, I can agree on this. However, the proposal of the compromise so far is looking to support the unions far more than it is does for the South, who depend on slavery. What is the last act? The last proposal on Henry Clay's compromise was the highly controversial Fugitive Slave Act. The final proposal is the Fugitive Slave Act, highly condemned by the North. This act would require federal ju judicial officials in all states and federal territories, including in those states and territories in which slavery was prohibited, to assist with the return of escaped slaves to their master, masters actively in states and territories permitting slavery. Why do you think this should be passed, Calhoun? This act is absolutely necessary if this compromise is to be passed. We feel as if this compromise is super biased to the North without the act being passed. Why should we be forced to participate to slavery personally by returning them? We are forced to lose many things in this compromise and feel as if this act is necessary in the order for compromise to be passed. We completely disagree with this and think the Fugitive Slave Act is outrageous. However, if this is needed to complete the compromise, we will accept the act. This act was debated for about seven to eight months and was so rigorously pro-slavery as it caused ordinary citizens to be required to aid slave catchers. Many North Northern Northerners deeply resented the requirement to help slave slavery personally. Resentment towards the act continued to heighten tensions between the North and the South. This compromise was passed and in short term was accepted by both sides, but as conflict started to worsen, eventually the compromise was broken and the Civil War had started.